Shalom children of God. Welcome back to Marie Speaks God's Grace Bible Study. This lesson we continue in second sermon of Moses of blessed memory speech to the nation of Israel before his death and the nation of Israel carrying on into the promised land. This lesson we will review the portion Deuteronomy portion of the Bible study will be read Deuteronomy 11 26 to 16 17, Haftorah, Isaiah 54 11 to 55 to 5. The next portion of the Bible study will be Softim Deuteronomy 16 18 to 21 to 9, Haftarah, Isaiah 51 12 to 52 12. In this Bible study we will be going over, Devarim, Deuteronomy, CH 13 and 14. I entitled this Bible study, False Prophets, Soothsayers of Dreams and Lawless Men. Oh my! I believe this Bible study's main concepts are 1. More examples and details on how we are able to identify and deal with those who aim to mislead us away from Hashem our God and His Torah and Commandments, thus removing us from the covenant to Hashem. 2. If there is to be a special consideration of sorts or compromises for relationships, relations blood, friends, or well-liked person status when dealing with misleaders, false prophets, and or soothsayers. 3. What is considered by God, to be evil, misuse, self or others or gifts, and or abusive in behavior and or conduct, towards God, self or others. Heaven forbid. Let's get into. Portion of a portion. For the portion of a portion Deuteronomy Devarim read Deuteronomy 11 26 to 16 17, Hof Torah, Isaiah 54 11 to 55 to 5. The next portion of the Bible study will be Softim Deuteronomy 16 18 to 21 to 9, Haftarah, Isaiah 51 12 to 52 12, for those who would like to read ahead. We will continue to increase in our intro Hebrew vocabulary, intro Hebrew terminology, Tanakh, the actual Jewish Bible. That means no New Testament, introduction, and Torah spiritual teaching. I have added to the blog newsletter the blessings before and after reading the Torah. Jewish terminology. This week's Jewish terminology word is, Zs, pronounce this. The JPS Dictionary of Jewish Words by Joyce Eisenberg and Ellen Skinnick, 2001 Copyright First Edition, defines our Jewish terminology word of the week, Zs. As a Yiddish word meaning sweet. This word usually refers to a sweet food or dessert. Used in such expression as Zim Neshimele, a gentle soul, and Ahab it says in Pesach, have a sweet Passover. For the video blog of this week's Jewish terminology word of the week please click on the image above. The blog post that is coupled with live Bible studies can be found by clicking here. Moving on to the Bible study section. Blessings of the Torah. Why blessings of the Torah? Before we begin the study of the Torah, blessing is done. In saying the blessing we are fulfilling a mitzvah and blessing Hashem, of glory and truth's beautiful Torah. A mitzvah is defined basically as 1. A commandment of the Jewish law. 2. The fulfillment of such a commandment. 3. A worthy deed. I say these blessings every morning during my morning prayers. And, to ensure I am not leading others into do improper practices, I want to ensure I repeat the blessings of HaShem, our merciful Father's Torah just in case others may not have yet had a chance today. Blessings of the Torah Blessed are you, HaShem our God, King of the Universe, who sanctified us with His commandments and commanded us to be engrossed in the words of Torah. HaShem our God, please make the words of your Torah pleasant in our mouths and in the mouths of your people Israel. And may we and our descendants, and the descendants of our descendants, and the descendants of your people the house of Israel, all know your name and be students of your Torah for its own sake. Blessed are you, Hashem who teaches Torah to his people, Israel. Blessed are you, Hashem our God, King of the universe who chose us from among all the peoples and gave us his Torah. Blessed are you, Hashem, giver of the Torah. Blessing before the reading of the Torah. Vortu esadu noi ham voroch. Bless the El Road who is blessed. Congregation and Oli say. Baruch Adu Noi Ham Voroch Lalam Tho Ed. Blessed be the El Road who is blessed for all eternity. Oli continues. Baruch Ata Adu Noi Eloheinu Melech Ho Olum, Asher Bochar Banu Mikal Ha'amim, Nozen Lanu Es Toroso. Baruch Ata Adu Noi, Nosean Ha Toro. Blessed are you, El Road RGD. King of the universe, who has chosen us from among all the nations and given us his Torah. 
Blessed are you El Road, who gives the Torah. Let us begin with today's lesson. Bible study handbook sources I love to use are linked below as well as on our website. I did take the advice from others and create a page to the website that titled What Marie Likes. I wanted to create a page that had some of my favorite items to share with others. Some of these items or sources I have on this page I have discussed on the live and uploaded Bible studies. I understand that sometimes sources or resources that are authentic and Jewish may be difficult to find. This page aims to help or assist for those seeking some of the gems and glories that might be hidden in and of Judaism. I am not paid to endorse anything on this Bible study of page unless directly noted. I truly do want to help make others journey or study in Torah a little more easy and enjoyable. Please feel free to message on Facebook or IG with any questions related to this page. I fully admit I am not an expert, but I will do my best to help take some looks around. Oh, well. that being said, enjoy. 1. Portion on portion of Bible study can be found by double clicking this hyperlink, which began at Dovarim read chapter 11, verse 26, and ends at 16, verse 17. 2. Biblical text portion of Bible study. This Bible study I have continued to use Metsuda Publications, 2009. I honestly, am liking this version of the Tanakh. The version is hyperlinked for those who are interested in reading further. Devarim CH 13 verses 1 through 6. 1. How to identify a false prophet or soothsayer of dreams. Everything that I am commanding you, be careful to fulfill it, do not add to it and do not subtract from it. If a prophet arises among you or a dreamer of a dream, and he gives you an omen or a miracle. And the omen or the miracle happens, the one he told you about, saying, Let us go after other gods, that you do not know, and let us serve them. Do not listen to the words of that prophet or to that dreamer of a dream, because Adonai, your God, is testing you to know whether you love Adonai, your God, wholeheartedly and with your entire beings. After Adonai, your God, are you to go, fear him, keep his commandments, heed his voice, serve him, and cleave to him. And that prophet or that dreamer of a dream is to be executed, for he has uttered a fabrication about Adonai, your God, who took you out of the land of Egypt, and who redeemed you from the house of bondage, to mislead you from the way that Adonai, your God, commanded you to go upon, and you will eliminate the evil from within you. Commentary I have been taught and experienced, False prophets and false dream interpreters tell 90% of a familiar truth, but the 10% is what turns them and leads them towards turning away from God. For the longing of one's heart concerning love or money. A soothsayer will always sway someone from meeting or being with their soulmate and from receiving the riches of Ha. Shem. If one wants to meet their soulmate or have any gain in money or finances, one should only ask and wait one Ha Shem. As regards to asking one's rabbi or religious confidant, of course merciful Hashem will and can send us a messenger of truth. But, please be cautious just as we have read previously, we also might be sent a false prophet as in the book of I Kings ch 13. Someone, anyone who speaks contradictory to what we have heard from Hashem could be delivering a trying event that we are meant to avoid and conquer, in order to be worthy or prove our worthiness for our blessing s from Ha. Shem. Just so we are clear. Given to today's base array of technology, witches, warlocks, soothsayers, and false prophets use apps, programs, music, books, and so on to trick others away, cast spells, steal, and trap naive persons. How can one truly know they are hearing from God? I'll go into this during the live Bible study in more detail. But just a hint God doesn't always say yes. Okay. Hmm. And the best examples of reference how one hears from Almighty God are in the Torah and Tanakh. For example, dash. 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 17 thru 20. And it was in the heart of David my father to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Lord said to David my father, Whereas it was in thy heart to build a house to my name, thou didst well that it was in thy heart. Yet thou shalt not build the house, but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house to my name. And the Lord has performed his word that he spoke, and I am risen up in the place of David my father, and sit on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. Or is written in 2 Chronicles chapter 33 verses 1 through 20. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. 
He did what was displeasing to the Lord, following the apparent practices of the nations that the Lord had dispossessed before the Israelites. He rebuilt the shrines that his father Hezekiah had demolished, he erected altars for the Baals and made sacred posts. He bowed down to all the host of heaven and worshipped them. And he built altars, to them, in the house of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, My name will be in Jerusalem forever. He built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. He consigned his sons to the fire in the valley of Ben Hinnom, and he practiced soothsaying, divination, and sorcery, and consulted ghosts and familiar spirits, he did much that was displeasing to the Lord in order to vex him. He placed a sculptured image that he made in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to his son Solomon, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I chose out of all the tribes of Israel, I will establish my name forever. And I will never again remove the feet of Israel from the land that I assigned to their fathers, if only they observe faithfully all that I have commanded them, all the teaching and the laws and the rules given by Moses. Manasseh led Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem astray into evil greater than that done by the nations that the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they would not pay heed. So the Lord brought against them the officers of the army of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh captive in manacles, bound him in fetters, and led him off to Babylon. In his distress, he entreated the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. He prayed to him, and he granted his prayer, heard his plea, and returned him to Jerusalem to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord alone was God. Afterward he built the outer wall of the city of David west of Gahon in the wadi on the way to the fish gate, and it encircled awful, he raised it very high. He also placed army officers in all the fortified towns of Judah. He removed the foreign gods and the image from the house of the Lord, as well as all the altars that he had built on the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem, and dumped them outside the city. He rebuilt the altar of the Lord and offered on it sacrifices of well-being and thanksgiving, and commanded the people of Judah to worship the Lord God of Israel. To be sure, the people continued sacrificing at the shrines, but only to the Lord their God. The other events of Manasseh's reign, and his prayer to his God, and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel are found in the chronicles of the kings of Israel. His prayer and how it was granted to him, the whole account of his sin and trespass, and the places in which he built shrines and installed sacred posts and images before he humbled himself are recorded in the words of Hosei. Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried on his palace grounds, his son Amon succeeded him as king. Any new word or revelation that God gives us will be based off his previous words given and written in the Torah and Tanakh. Of course, always confirm with Hashem and seek his wisdom for everything and anything. Amen. 2. How should we treat or act towards those who attempt to turn us away from Hashem? Devarim chapter 13 verses 7 through 12. If one shall incite you, your brother, son of your mother, or your son or your daughter, or the wife of your bosom, or your neighbor who is your soulmate, clandestinely, saying, Let us go and serve other gods whom you never knew, neither you nor your forefathers. From the gods of the nations that surround you, who are near you or at a distance from you, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the earth. Do not be favorably inclined towards him, and do not listen to him, and do not view him compassionately, and do not take pity and do not cover for him. For you must surely execute him. Let your hand strike him first to execute him, and the hand of the entire people afterward. And you are to stone him with stones so that he dies, for he sought to mislead you from Adonai, your God, who took you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of slavery. And all of Yisroah will hear and will fear, and they will not proceed to do so evil a thing as this within you. Commentary now I am not teaching to violate masses of laws or forsake laws, but biblically Torah speaking, yes this was very rare for stoning to occur. I am not teaching to commit acts of violence, nor harm, nor break any laws. In biblical times for a stoning to happen once in a Kohen's, life it, from the service age of 30 to age 60, it would have been known as a bloody service. To have a bloody service or bloody term for a Kohen would have been seen as a disgrace and lack of spiritual closeness with our Divine One, blessed be He, for the nation of Israel. This may sound odd, but a sever consequence was listed as a deterrence and a way to prevent violators of the laws. No Kohen wanted a bloody court or bloody service under his term. 
Nor, did a Cohen want a fellow Cohen to follow his term if heaven forbid it were to have a bloody court. Now, does not mean that lawlessness was allowed? Heaven forbid, no. What traditionally happened was someone who repeated broke laws was punished under laws or service, slavery, atonement through acts of work or money payment, and the most severed cast away or out of the tribal lands. For example, people who were known to participate in witchcrafts, or be evil, or commit violent acts, and so on they were normally cut off from the tribe. For violating many laws, removal from the territory and given time to repent and make chiva was always the goal. Of course, if one continued in their own willful acts of evil, then they obviously brought about their own destruction. The destruction would show in a variety of plays outs, but would most certainly become a proverb for others to witness and avoid. So why do we read about stoning and beheading and were being put down by the sword? Those consequences in judgment were used towards leaders of the community. In Judaism the harsh and most severe rewards were repeated unrepented, evil vile disobedience towards God and shameful abuse towards man, is reserved for kings, princes, elders and leaders of the community. To name a few. Why? Those who were supposed to do the most great acts for Hashem's name, but instead choose to do evil. And in doing evils, lead others to sin or commit evils towards God, themselves, and others. 3. What is considered by God to be evil, misuse, and or abusive in behavior and or conduct? Heaven forbid! Devarim chapter 13 verses 13 tor 19 If you hear in one of your cities that Adonai, your God, is giving you in which to settle, the following. Men have gone out, unscrupulous from among you, and they have misled the inhabitants of their city by saying, Let us go and serve other gods that you do not know. You must investigate, inquire, and interrogate thoroughly, and if in fact the report is true and accurate, this abomination was committed among you. You must surely strike down the inhabitants of that city by the sword, annihilate it and everything that is in it, and its livestock by the sword. And all its booty are you to collect within its plaza, and you are to burn and fire the city and all its booty, totally, for Adonai, your God, and it will be a ruin forever, it is never to be rebuilt. Let nothing of the harem cling to your hand, so that Adonai withdraws his raising fury and grant you mercy, and he will be merciful toward you and multiply you as he swore to your forefathers. When you heed the voice of Adonai, your God, to guard all his commandments that I am commanding you today, to do the upright in the eyes of Adonai, your God. Commentary this justice by the sword is reserved for those outsiders or invaders who bring evil and lawlessness into the grounds that have been given to Eretz Israel by Hashem to afflict Bani Israel and his host. Lawless men? Is this a man or group who denounced the law of Torah? Is this a man or group not within the covenant who preaches not to observe covenant laws? I believe the verses above are stating to those questions listed above. Yes. And sadly, many who claim to even be of the Jewish faith, state not to follow the commandments as dictated by our teacher Moses by the voice of God. This is crazy. This is apostasy. This is treason to our Father in heaven. How can this happen one might ask? Because the people of God are allowing corruption in the house of the Lord to take place and continue. The verses, we have gone over above clearly state. The people of Hashem are to hold each other accountable. Come one, we all slip up. We all make mistakes, or even forget. A law here or there. Okay fine. We are humans and sometimes we are even lazy humans. Let's be real. But, witchcraft, sorcery, paganism, apostasy, flat out saying and making entire new denominations in order for masses to not serve God according to his word. Together? Really? This is crazy. This is apostasy. This is treason to our Father in heaven. This vile abomination acts happen because the people of HaShem have lost their zeal for Torah and HaShem. This can be corrected of course. Chuva, stop going, support, donating to those who forsake Torah, and start with a true self-accounting according to Torah. To name a few. Chapter 14 of Devarim verse 1. You are sons to Adonai, your God. Do not lacerate yourselves and do not make yourselves fall between your eyes for a dead person. Commentary Being a holy people, there are simple conducts that we are no supposed to engage in nor are we to endorse. No cutting oneself as a memorial or to memorialize the dead. But also, no celebrating the dead this means holiday. 
No talking to the dead. No invoking the dead. There are many cultures and even certain so-called religions that actively promote communication and worshiping of the dead. Those religions have roots that can be traced back to the Canaanites. Yes, this includes the Rome 325 demonic cults and the many of abominations denominations that branched out from that evil sorcery tree. Devarim chapter 14 verse 2 For you are a sacred people to Adonai, your God, and Adonai has chosen you to be for him a treasured people from all the peoples who are on the surface of the earth. Commentary Every commandment that our God set in place for us, was guidance for our benefit to ensure our protection. Protection from among other things or events, sickness, illness, disease, heartbreak, harm, and sorrow. Devarim chapter 14 verses 3 THRU 21 Do not eat any abomination. These are the animals that you are to eat, the bovine, the sheep and the goat, the gazelle, the deer and the fallow deer, and the ibex and the adax, and the wild ox and the wild sheep. And every animal whose soul is cloven, whose hoof is truly split in two, regurgitating, it's, cut within the animals, it may you eat. These, however, do not eat from the regurgitators of cut and from the cloven sold, the dromedary, the camel, and the hare and the hyrax, for regurgitators of cut are they, but have no cloven soul, they are ritually unclean for you. Also the pig, because it is cloven sold but does not regurgitate its, cud, it is ritually unclean for you. From their flesh do not eat, and do not come in contact with their carcasses. These are you to eat from whatever is in the water, whatever has fins and scales may you eat. And whatever does not have fins and scales do not eat, they are ritually unclean for you. You may eat any pure bird. And this is what you may not eat, the griffin vulture and the bearded vulture and the black vulture, the ra and the aya, and the kite according to its kind, and every raven according to its kind, and the dark desert eagle owl and the kestrel, and the gull, and the sparrow hawk according to its kind, the dark little owl, and the long-eared owl, and the tin shames, and the light little owl, and the Egyptian vulture, and the shalch, and the stork, and the heron according to its kind, and the dutch ephas, and the bat. And all flying creeping creatures are ritually unclean for you, they may not be eaten. Every ritually clean bird you may eat. Do not eat any carcass, to the alien in your cities give it it and he will eat it or sell it to a non-Jew, for you are a people sanctified to Adonai, your God, do not cook a kid in its mother's milk. Commentary We are holy and holy people and holy people do not eat unholy things. We also don't go to unholy places. We also should be among those who live unholy lives. We are set apart to be set apart from those who choose to live lives in direct opposition to the covenant to Ha. Shem. 4. A duty to God, self and fellow man. Devarim chapter 14 verses 22 through 29. You must surely tithe all the produce of your planting, that your field yields on a yearly basis. You shall eat in the presence of Adonai, your God, in the place he chooses to house his presence there, the tithe of your grain, your wine, and your olive oil, and the firstborn of your cattle and flocks, in order that you learn to fear Adonai, your God, all the years. If the journey will be beyond you, if you will be unable to carry it because the place is distant for you where Adonai, your God, chooses to set his presence there, for Adonai, your God, has blessed you. You will substitute coins. You will bundle the coins in your hand, and will go to the place that Adonai, your God, chooses. You will spend the money for anything you desire, for cattle, sheep, wine, intoxicating liquor, and for anything that you wish and you will eat there in the presence of Adonai, your God, and will rejoice, you and your household. And the Levite who is in your city, you must not abandon, since he has no portion or inheritance with you. At the end of three years, separate all the tithes of your produce of that year and set them aside in your city. The Levite shall come, for he has no portion or inheritance with you, and the proselyte and the orphan and the widow who are in your city, let them eat their fill, in order that Adonai, Your God bless you in all the endeavors that you make. Commentary We are required to work and be active. We are commanded by God to use our might for the sake of His glorious name. Bereshit, Genesis 3, 19 By the sweat of your brow shall you get bread to eat until you return to the ground. For from it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Commentary 
The entire crop by your brow you shall tells as written in Bereshit this is a redemption tax, for lack of better word or an offering, year by year. Why? Because the very day that they ate off the tree of fruit knowledge good and evil God told them if they disobeyed him they would surely die. Why? He placed the man in the garden and ordered for him to keep and keep it and rule over it Bereshit the harming out and correcting refining of man into something that serves only Hashem according to his word Torah and him alone. Greater than Amen and Amen, Hashtag thank you. Ha! Shem! Greater than. Greater than congratulations. You have made through another Bible study. Sound some praise and joy to our Father who is in heaven. Greater than. Greater than glory to the one and only living God. Ha! Shem! I pray that everyone, everywhere, repents and returns to the only one who can save Ha! Shem! The true and only living God. Receive Torah. Be back in the covenant of God. Be at the Har sign I say yes and be saved. The choice is yours. Amen and Amen. In conclusion. I am left with the same thoughts that I have had since season 1. Everyone has a choice. And everything has a choice. Accept the Torah, turn from evil and do good, or even chose this day whom one shall serve. In any case. Some will chose the life in Torah with Hashem. And. Sadly some will chose the sword. Oa Amen and Oa Amen. Greater than blessings after reading the Torah. Greater than. Greater than Baruch Atah Adu Noi Eloheinu Melech Ho Olum, Asher Nozen Lanu Torah Eims, Jiye Olum Noda Bisakainu. Baruch Atah Adu Noi, Nosean Ha Toro. Greater than translation. Greater than blessed are you, El wrote our God, King of the Universe, who has given us the Torah of Truth and planted eternal life within us. Blessed are you El Rod, who gives the Torah. Credit learn the Torah blessings for an Aliyah. Biblical portion of Bible study complete. Friendly reminder. Half Torah this portion is. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 11 THRU chapter 55 verse 5. Unhappy, storm tossed one, uncomforted. I will lay carbuncles as your building stones. And make your foundations of sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies. Your gates of precious stones. The whole encircling wall of gems. And all your children shall be disciples of the Lord. And great shall be the happiness of your children. You shall be established through righteousness. You shall be safe from oppression. And shall have no fear. From ruin, and it shall not come near you. Surely no harm can be done. Without my consent. Whoever would harm you. Shall fall because of you. It is I who created the smith. To fan the charcoal fire. And produce the tools for his work. So it is I who create. The instruments of havoc. No weapon formed against you. Shall succeed. And every tongue that contends with you at law. You shall defeat. Such is the lot of the servants of the Lord. Such their triumph through me. Declares the Lord. Chapter 55. Ho, all who are thirsty. Come for water. Even if you have no money. Come, buy food and eat. Buy food without money. Wine and milk without cost. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? Your earnings for what does not satisfy? Give heed to me. And you shall eat choice food. And enjoy the richest viands. Incline your ear and come to me. Hearken, and you shall be revived. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant. The enduring loyalty promised to David. A prince and commander of peoples. So you shall summon a nation you did not know. And a nation that did not know you. Shall come running to you, eh? For the sake of the Lord your God. The Holy One of Israel who has glorified you. Sepharia.org Today's Bible study is complete. Thank you merciful Hashem, for allowing us to meet this day. Closing comment, blessings after reading the Torah, and priestly blessing and all sources are hyperlinked. Note, all sources are hyperlinked to allow more translatable version in podcast. I pray others got something out of this portion, Tanakh Bible study, and spiritual Torah teaching. Until next time, let us close with the priestly blessing. And Hashem our God spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons, 
saying, This is the way you shall bless the children of Israel. Say to them, Yuverichecha Adonai Vayishmiricha. Yar Adonai Panavaleka Vichanika. Yesa Adonai Panavaleka Vyasam Lecha Shalom. The LD bless you and keep you. The LD make his face shine upon you. And be gracious to you. The LD lift up his countenance upon you. And give you peace. So they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them. In Hashem and Hashem's alone mighty glorious name. Forever and ever. Amen and Amen. Cover art created by Marie Speaks God's Grace Bible Study, Photos, Apps, Internet Pull or Facebook Page, Credits are noted on art and or hyperlinked for credit. Click and follow for shorts. For those that are new to this Bible study, Welcome, the following is a brief review of this Bible study. 1. This blog post will have the resources and sources links for the Season 5 Bible Studies. 2. All books used and readings from During Live Bible Study can be found on our website, Marie Speaks God's Grace. Live in the Season 5 portion of the website. 3. After live Bible studies have completed, I will upload to Rumble and post link in this blog. How we conduct Bible studies here. We believe in one and only one God. Hashem, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We do not and will not pray in any other's name or praise any other, but Ha. Shem. Exodus chapter 20, 2-14. God spoke all these words, saying. I the Lord am your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods besides me. You shall not make for yourself a sculptured image or any likeness of what is in the heavens above, or on the earth below, or in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I the Lord your God am an impassioned God, visiting the guilt of the parents upon the children, upon the third and upon the fourth generations of those who reject me. But showing kindness to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. We believe God has called each of us to search matters out. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. And the glory of a king to plumb a matter. Like the heavens in their height, like the earth in its depth, is the mind of kings, unfathomable. Proverbs 25 2-3 This is one reason why here at Marie Speaks God's Grace Bible Study, we review several historical references and resources, of which we provide links and or screenshots for others to study at their leisure. We have been directed by God Wonderful and Almighty, to go book by book, verse by verse, sharing His Torah and Tanakh. We believe as directed by God our Heavenly Father, learning and growing in Torah and Tanakh leads to understanding and wisdom, this shall only be achieved in reading, studying, and sharing His Word for ourselves, not relying on man. Learning, growing, and studying with our LD is to be done with others that are like-minded, but more so during our personal time. The blogs are written to assist those just beginning to study the Bible as a starting point. The live or recorded Bible studies are to cover and release opportunities and guidance, but ultimately is one's own personal responsibility to rule, govern, and be purposeful in their relationship with God. Proverbs 22, 4-6 The effect of humility is fear of the Lord. Wealth, honor, and life. Thorns and snares are in the path of the crooked. He who values his life will keep far from them. Train the lad in the way he ought to go. He will not swear from it even in old age. Ezekiel 18, 20-22 The person who sins, he alone shall die. A child shall not share the burden of a parent's guilt, nor shall a parent share the burden of a child's guilt. The righteousness of the righteous shall be accounted to him alone, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be accounted to him alone. Moreover, if the wicked one repents of all the sins that he committed and keeps all my laws and does what is just and right, he shall live, he shall not die. None of the transgressions he committed shall be remembered against him, because of the righteousness he has practiced, he shall live. Is it my desire that a wicked person shall die? Says the LD God. It is rather that he shall turn back from his ways and live. May Hashem, blessed be He continue to bless us all and may we all be forever written in the Book of Life. Amen and Amen. A little about me, I love Hashem, Torah, and Tanakh. I am not perfect. If we meet, we talking about Torah, drinking tea or coffee, 
and what books are out about Hashem. And maybe over some kosher pizza. Maybe over some kosher steak, make over super sweet kosher cake. Have a fun laugh about you guess it. Torah. Or on a bike, or during a hike, or while riding on a train in the rain as the rain falls nicely on the plane in Spain, but either way, we'll be talking about Torah. What is import to me colon dot 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 a relationship with our Father Hashem our merciful Creator, Savior, and Wise King. Live in Torah, live with family and community of tribe. My thoughts, we may not be perfect, but we study, we learn, we laugh, and we grow. We try try and have the courage to try again. My goals, to learn and grow and share love of Torah and Hashem with others who are willing or open to hearing. I have been using the Minds.com account and Rumble, Live Bible Study Video Post, Rumble As main accounts Lastly, never lose faith Let's continue to fear and love Hashem like A and pray Pray for our nation, enemies, fellows and many lost sons and daughters of Torah to return to Hashem Blessed be He forever and ever, Amen Ha! Shem is on the move Blessings and prayers Marie let us begin link to rumble live bible study link to previous bible study audio podcast blog version of bible study audio of blog link to youtube live link bible study cover art credit duckduckgo brave browser images hyperlinked one two and three